Hello everyone, Worst here, and in this video we're going to be learning how to make a panorama slash slave lives video out of a regular video. You're going to need about two and a half programs, the first one being Huggin, the panorama creator, and the second one being GIMP, which I'm sure many of you have heard of, and then the half of the program is just an online website that helps convert videos into pictures. So just go ahead and download those right now and pause the video and then after the downloads have started go ahead and continue watching so you know what you're getting into. The first thing you want to find is a video. This can often be the hardest step because some things are just kind of hard to tell what they would look like in a panorama form. So after a bit of digging found a video that I thought would look pretty good as a panorama. Basically what you want to do is find the best quality of that video that you can and then go ahead and download that video. And there are websites that can help you download any video from anywhere really, so just do a quick Google search and you can download the video. The next thing you're going to want to do is go to our half program here on this website and go ahead and put in the video that you downloaded. If the video is just on a URL, you can do that too and go ahead and download the video into the pictures format um, and go ahead and select the best quality and that will give you uh, the highest quality of pictures um, from that video and so you'll have a nicer looking finished product and so once you're down downloading from that website you have a zip folder of just tons of pictures kind of like a stop motion animation style of the video that you want to turn into a panorama now once you've got all your pictures go ahead and extract them from your zip folder and then go ahead and trim the beginning and end of your clip to make sure it's really just what you want to stabilize. The process takes a lot longer the more pictures you have so chopping down your photos into the, a more concise amount will help make the process quicker and it'll have a more, much more cleaner product at the end for you. So go ahead and just delete the beginning and end to where you choose and then you will want to open up the Huggin program. Once you have Huggin opened up, it may look a little weird. Just go ahead and go up to the top left of the box and click on interface and make sure you go to Expert. From that point, you'll want to hit on Add Images and go ahead and navigate your way to the folder where you have all your uh, different frames from the video saved. After you import all the clips, it's gonna ask you to put in the focal length uh, most commonly you'll just put in 50 millimeters if you don't know. If you do happen to know what the focal length is, go ahead and put that in. But by default, just go ahead and put in 50 in that focal length box. And then the other two numbers will fill in automatically for you. And then just press OK. And from that point on, all your clips will be, or all your little pictures will be imported into the Huggin program. And now you will want to go down into that kind of bottom left part and make sure you are on Huggin CP Find. That should be the default, but go ahead and just make sure you're on that. And then you will want to click on Create Control Points. Now this process can take a bit of a while and it would not be surprising at all if Huggin crashed on you. It can be kind of finicky software, so go ahead and just be patient and then the longer your video is and the more clips you have on, the longer this is gonna take. And basically what this this part of the program does is it compares each picture to each of the previous pictures to see any similarities between them. And this is how the program line up, lines up each of the pictures to make that kind of panorama style. So it connects every picture in the correct format. After that is completed, you will want to go over to the control points tab. The first thing you want to do in the control points tab is click on the bottom right check boxes and make sure all of those are set to yes. So just make sure they're all clicked. And then the next thing you want to do is look for parallel lines. Now I am not an expert on this program and I really am not sure how this part works but what you want to do is on one of the left screens quick and then on one of the right screens, click down on a line that you see within your frame. So this will create one of the lines for reference for the program to know 
what's kind of up and down and it's kind of left and right to keep your pictures kind of all stabilized. And then you want to do this again by clicking on another line within the frame and then you want to click on the right side of the window again to finish creating that line. Hopefully that kind of makes sense. You can see it in the video. And so what you want to make sure is that those lines are parallel and that will help the program again kind of understand the dimensions within the framing. Uh, you can go ahead and try skipping this step. If it's not working for you, I believe what it does is it just references the first image and I haven't tried doing it without the style, without making the lines, but if you want to experiment with that, go ahead and try that out. And then after you have created your lines, you want to go ahead and go back to the photos tab, which is the first tab, and go all the way down to the bottom left and make sure on that geometric tab, you're on positions, uh, incrementals starting from the anchor, and then you just hit calculate there. And this is another weird part about the program. It might freeze, as you can see from me, it went into the non-responding state. And then after a little bit, it came up with this panorama tools optimizing variables thing. And it says like elapsed time, even though it's not changing. And then a bar just kind of keeps going saying that it's loading. I really have no clue what the program is doing at this point but I do know that all you have to really do is hit cancel or the X button a few times and just wait and let it do its thing and regardless if it says it's finished or not at the end it'll bring up a little sign saying hey it's done the optimizer is finished um, and do you want to apply these changes and just go ahead and say yes and so at this point you're pretty well on your way and you want to go and click on that top left dish under all those settings that one that says GL on it and that'll bring up the probably the thing that you first saw at the beginning when you opened up the program and this is kind of like setting up the stage for what your panorama is going to look like so the basic goal at this part of the program is to make your entire panorama fit inside a visible box so what we have to start off is kind of this really weird looking thing and basically your goal is to change the field of view um, and the options next to that into something where you want to make sure the big kind of rectangular thing on the right you can see your entire panorama and then on the left the spherical thing that kind of shows you how your uh, how your image is being projected onto a ball. I don't exactly get it, but you can use the move and drag tool to help kind of translate your panorama into the viewable area. So just kind of fill it around with this a lot and you can watch what I do. I sped this part up because it took kind of a while, but just uh, messing around with the, with the roll or any of the movement you need to, and just try and get it so your entire panorama is, is visible within the parameters that you set. And a cool little trick you can do is you can hold down the control button and you can pan over the different parts of your pictures to see which parts will show up first and kind of shows you how the entire picture is stitched together. And so at this point, you're nearly done with the picture part of the process. So you wanna go ahead and go back to that first window you had open where you were doing all the optimizing and stuff. And so go back over to that window and then you want to go to the far right tab that says stitcher on it. And so on the stitcher tab, uh, what you want to do is go to the canvas size and go ahead and click calculate optimal canvas size. Yeah, uh, uncheck the exposure corrected one, that kind of first auto check tab. And under remapped images, you also want to just check on that second box there. Um, the one that has to do with the exposure. So go ahead and uncheck those and then under the processing where it says the remapper and the Nona thing, under the options, just go ahead and make sure it is not saving any of the cropped photos, I believe. And so go ahead and make sure that all the settings are just the same that you're seeing here. And then in the bottom right, you just hit stitch. Now just name your files whatever you like and go ahead and save all these new pictures into a new folder. And so that's the basic portion here. So 
as you can see in the photo viewer, if you just kind of scan through, you can see what we're dealing with and how we have all the separate images here. And then this next little part here is how to actually put it all together and something viewable. So go ahead and open up GIMP and with GIMP, just go to file and then open as layers and just go ahead and hit control A and you'll open up all the layers and just hit open. And that'll put all your layers into kind of a panorama thing. And then on GIMP, if you haven't used it before, you will go over kind of to that top left toolbars box and click on the square and then just crop it down to everything you really need to see. So for this example, you didn't really need to see any of the top or much of that bottom part because that's not where the action is. So I went ahead and just cropped those parts down into something that you wanted to view. I made a picture out of all the kind of panorama, the final panorama of all the photos together. And so I made that and then I put that at the very bottom of the stack and then I just kind of filled in the gaps with the spot healing brush tool or the clone stamp tool, whichever you prefer, at the bottom left and the bottom right corners, just because those are missing some of the concrete there. And so I moved that uh, layer all the way down to the bottom. From that point, this is where you actually want to make the GIF. So making the GIF is pretty easy. You just go to File and then Export As and then you can just uh, make the extension .j or .gif and then you hit export and the thing to make sure when you're exporting the gif is to have the as animation check mark ticked and the loop forever part ticked and you can put in a comment or whatever you want and then you just go ahead and hit export and once you're done exporting, you can go ahead and upload your GIF to any website. Uh, preferably, I like to use Imager. It's pretty good for hosting photos, and you can share it with your friends, family, whoever online. I'd like to also give a shout out to Theodore Funkenstein for creating the first tutorial that allowed me learn how to do this. And hopefully this video tutorial will serve helpful for anyone in the future. If you really like how these panorama style GIFs turn out and you want to see more of them, go ahead and check out the image stabilization subreddit. Link is in the description and you can watch an abundance of them there and maybe even contribute a few of their own if you wanted to mix them. Other than that, I'd like to thank you for watching and I will catch you guys later.